Ooh, what we got here? The size baddest 18 millimeter F2.8. Let's open this bad boy up. Before we jump into the review, I just want to say a huge thank you to all of you that are supporting me here through this channel. You guys rock. We are crushing the subscriber growth. We are like going up rapidly. And if you're new here and you're watching me for the first time, then you might want to consider hitting that subscribe button because, you know, that'd be appreciated. Let's talk about lens. Okay. The build quality of the Baddest series is something that I think is really, really solid. And it basically looks like a futuristic piece of equipment. Eh? It does have a metal casing around the lens, which makes it both look good and feel good. Because personally, I like to have the lenses covered in metal rather than plastic. Because there's something about plastic that makes a lens feel cheap. You don't have any kind of buttons on the lens, which is something that I personally miss because I really like having the AF MF switch here on the side so that I can turn off the autofocus on the lens instead of having to go into the camera and switching off that way. The only thing that you have on the lens is the focus ring and the OLED screen here up top. The lens is actually kind of a lightweight lens at 330 grams and I don't know how much that is in pounds, but I'm gonna have to Google that and put it like right here. So all of you Americans know that as well. But it will feel really well balanced onto your Sony camera. Ah! All right, the focus ring is something that I personally do not like on the whole battery series because the choice of rubber on this thing is making it feel kind of cheap, you know? I don't know why they went with this one instead of the like rugged rubber that they have on the G Master lenses because that feels more professional and more precise to the touch when you're using the focus. The smoothness of the ring could have been a little bit better as well because I do think that it is like, it is smooth, but it is not as smooth as the G Master 24mm, which has the best focus ring that I've ever tried. So, uh, yeah, they could have done that a little bit better. What I do like a lot with the whole battery series is that every single lens in the lineup does have this, like, weather sealing gasket here in the back. And that is something that I personally think should be on every single lens that is costing above a thousand dollars. But that is unfortunately not the case. It gives you a more sense of security or a better sense of security when you have this like weather sealing on your lens so that you can shoot when it's raining outside or in dusty environments or anything like that so that nothing will get into your camera sensor. The focusing distance of this lens is 25 centimeters or 0.82 feet for all of you Americans out there. It's not that close and I don't think that it will give you those really interesting perspectives but it will blur out your foreground or background if you are really close to your subject. And now we're getting to the most important thing here. The image performance. It is really sharp at 2.8 but it will give you some vignetting in your photos. Personally, I don't think that vignetting is an issue at all, no matter what lens I use, because I usually add some vignetting in post to most of my images. But if you don't like vignetting, then you can just go into Lightroom and then press the enable lens profile correction and then the vignetting is gonna be gone. And if you stop the lens down to f4, then it does get a little bit sharper than it is at f2.8. I did a comparison to the 16-35 f4 lens that I got to see which of these two lenses was going to be the sharpest one. And to be completely honest, I did think that the baddest lens was going to be the one that was the sharpest, you know, with the absolute like razor sharp edges, but I didn't actually see any kind of difference at all. And the 1635 is really, really sharp at the wider focal length. When it comes to the bokeh, it will give you some blurred out background because it is an f2.8 lens, but you also gotta be really, really close to your subjects 
to get that blurred out background because it's such a wide lens. Autofocus wise, I do think that the baddest lens that I've tried so far does have the absolute best autofocus that I've tried for the Sony a7 cameras. It is really fast, really accurate, and it also works really, really well with IAF2, so no complaints there. So, what about the video performance? Can you shoot B-roll with this lens? Yes. Yes, you can. When it comes to vlogging, this lens does work, but personally I wouldn't recommend it because you want to have like a lens that is able to go from this really wide field of view like this, but then be able to crop into a narrower, narrower field of view like uh, 35 millimeters. So I would recommend the 16-35, which I think is really, really good. And also you don't have the OSS in this lens, which means that it will kind of be a little bit shaky. Uh, but not that much, but if you compare it to the 6 and 3 5, then 6 and 3 5 will be the better lens when it comes to vlogging because that will give you way steadier shots. It might not sound like a huge difference when it comes to like 18 millimeter versus 16 millimeter, but if we change to the 16 millimeter, then you can see that there's a lot more in frame when I'm using the 16 millimeter, right? So even though it might not sound like much, it's actually quite a huge difference. However, I do think that it's a great lens to use if you're shooting interior shots because then you get that 2.8 aperture so that you, can... that you can use inside even if it's dark or if you're shooting landscape videos to get that really wide field of view. So this lens is mainly gonna be aimed to those of you that are doing astrophotography, interior shots, or landscape photography, and those kind of things. But in my opinion, I do think that there are some better options out there for a similar price that you can go for instead of this lens. Personally, I think that the 16-35 f4 lens is a really, really good lens because it does give you this really, really wide field of view of 16 millimeters, and then you can go all the way up to 35. It's also a really good lens to use for vlogging or any kind of handheld video shooting because you have the built-in OSS in the lens. And then you have the 24mm G Master lens that I'm shooting with right now. And if you want to check out that review, you can do it right here because it is actually one of the absolute best lenses that I've tried so far. And you know, you get that 1.4 aperture. I know that it's not as wide as this one, but come on. Oh, it's so good. But again, it's going to be depending a lot on what kind of purpose that you're going to use the lens for. So I would love to know your thoughts on this lens. Would you buy it or would you go for another lens? Drop a comment. If you liked the video, make sure you do give it a thumbs up because it does make a huge difference. So thank you for that. And if you haven't subscribed yet, that'd be really appreciated as well. And um, thanks so much for watching. And uh, until next time, take care. Have a good one. It is so hot. <laughs>